If you are in the market for a new mid-size SUV, here's a fresh new option from the house of Volkswagen. This is the Volkswagen Tiguan. It's the cousin to the Skoda Kushak. And this German-engineered SUV has been tailor-made to cater to the needs and preferences of Indian car buyers. What we have here today is the GT line in both the automatic and manual guise. How do they drive? Are they as well-built as you'd expect these German cars to be? Are they feature-rich? In this video, we answer all these questions. If you like this video, don't forget to like and share and subscribe to Autocar India's YouTube channel. And if you want to watch this Hindi video in Hindi, then go to What Car India YouTube channel par, and don't forget to subscribe to What Car India. Before getting in, let's quickly glance through the Tiguan's design. This Volkswagen comes across as a rather handsome, well-proportioned car with clean lines and it seems to have borrowed certain styling cues like the front grille and headlamp design as well as the sculpted bonnet from the more premium Tiguan. For India, Volkswagen has garnished its exteriors with heavy dollops of chrome which might divide opinions. Some might like it, some won't. What do you think of it? Let us know in the comment section down below. The Tiguan has a clean cut silhouette with a long wheelbase, a class leading 2651mm and a short overhang stance, most evident in profile. That the Tiguan and Kushak are closely related is more evident at the sides. And that's because the two share their doors, fenders, mirrors, the body cladding as well as the roof rails. Interestingly, the GT automatic version gets smarter looking 17-inch wheels and red front brake calipers, whereas the manual version gets rather bland 16 inches. The most distinctive detail about the Tiguan is undeniably its rear styling with attractive LED tail lamps connected by a light bar wrapped in a very interesting bezel-like design feature. The India-specific chrome treatment at the rear continues on the bumper and it mimics twin exhaust housings. However, as fresh and as stylish as it is, the Tiguan will not appeal to those looking for a hulking SUV with loads of road presence. It is 79mm shorter in length, 23mm shorter in height and the body is 30mm narrower than a Hyundai Creta. But if it's a chic, contemporary crossover you're after, this Volkswagen will fit the bill. And now, let's step inside the Tiguan's cabin. You hear that? That's the solid, reassuring thunk that we've come to associate with German cars. And the Volkswagen Tiguan is no exception. The dash is clean-cut and very Volkswagen in its design. The fit, finish and quality of materials on the inside is actually pretty nice. Now the plastics aren't textured or aren't soft touch either, but these feel solid and built to last. What's also nice is this coloured panel which has a nice ceramic-like feel to it and then you also get this faux carbon fibre on the dash fascia. The ceramic-like panel is red with certain body colours and while it may look cool and youthful to some, it may not have a universal appeal. What I really like is how nicely and how seamlessly this touchscreen is integrated into the dashboard. The 10-inch touchscreen is slick and the wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are a welcome inclusion. You also get preloaded apps which work using your smartphone's internet. This climate control area is shared with the Skoda Kushak and it is touch operable. Now once you're used to it, it's pretty nice and easy to operate. However, as fresh and as stylish as the Tiguan is, the big difference to the Kushak is the inclusion of a digital instrument cluster on the top spec Tiguan. Once you enter the cabin, almost immediately your eyes gravitate to this large coloured digital instrument cluster and what's nice is that the display and the colours are very nice and easy on the eyes. It's not the best executed digital instrument cluster though, as the display options are limited and only the central screen is configurable, while the ones on the side are dummy screens. There are some other highlights to talk of as well. 
Not only does the flat bottom steering wheel look very sporty, it also feels great to hold. There's plenty of adjustment on offer, the driving position is good, the front seats are comfortable, you're seated higher up and there is good visibility all around. There's plenty of storage areas including large door bins, a wireless phone charging pad and cup holders too. One thing that I really like is the backlit gear selector knob. What I didn't like, however, is that its fit could have been a little better. In addition, there are small things which dampen the cabin experience. As an example, the roof lining feels cheap. And these dummy buttons below the touchscreen are an eyesore. Do note, the car in focus here is the range-stopping GT Automatic, which gets all the bells and whistles. Here's a quick look at all that it packs in. What's missing are ventilated front seats and there's no option of a panoramic sunroof either. In terms of safety, the fully loaded Tigon does quite well for itself with six airbags over and above stability control that's standard across the range. The Tigon complies with the latest Indian crash test norms but hasn't been rated by Global NCAP as yet. Shifting focus to the rear seat, there's plenty to talk of. The rear seat of the Volkswagen Tiguan is pretty nice. I have good amount of thigh support. The backrest is nicely angled and there's a bit of contouring. So it's holding me in place when the driver up front is getting enthusiastic. Uh, the window line is quite low, so I have a nice view outside and it doesn't feel claustrophobic or hemmed in inside. Space, as you can see, is a plenty. For reference, I'm around 5 feet 9 inches tall and I can comfortably sit behind my own driving position. What's also nice is that even the middle passenger gets an individual headrest as well as a proper three-point seat belt. So in terms of safety, that's a big thumbs up. But however, a middle passenger will not be that comfortable here compared to its Korean rivals, of course. That's because of the narrow width of this car. Now for both these cars, the Volkswagen Tiguan as well as the Skoda Kushak, Volkswagen Group has intentionally reduced the size of the central hump. Now, most people think that this is a transmission tunnel, but actually it's a structure that gives the entire body shell a greater degree of torsional rigidity. Now, I'll explain with a piece of paper. Assuming this is the floor pan of your car, in case of a collision, it'll just crush and crumble. But a structure like this provides additional rigidity. So in case of collision, you see, it's not that easy to crumble. Other final points at the back are that passengers get nice big door pockets. They have seat back pockets to store additional items. There are two USB-C charging slots as well as rear AC vents for the rear passengers. The seats also fold 60-40, but even with all the seats up, luggage space is actually good. The floor is low, so you can fit in large suitcases. The Tigun is based on the MQB A0 IN platform, and this platform is 95% localized to keep a check on its costs. As mentioned, the Tigun is very closely linked to the Skoda Kushak that's just gone on sale. And these two cars also get the same engine and gearbox options, which include a 1 litre turbo petrol with either a 6 speed manual or automatic transmission and a 1.5 litre 150 horsepower turbo petrol with a 6 speed manual or a 7 speed dual clutch automatic. And before you ask, there won't be a diesel engine on offer. The car that I'm driving right now is a 1.5 litre, 150 horsepower turbo petrol engine. And like the Kushak, this one feels very energetic right from the get go. There's almost no lag or delay before the boost comes on. And the good thing is that this engine produces peak torque of 250 Newton meters from as low as 1600 RPM. So if you are driving in a higher gear at a lower engine speed, you don't need frequent downshifts to get going quickly. 
power delivery of this 1.5 liter engine is quite strong and it will pull forward in a very enthusiastic manner although you don't get that sudden turbo kick or that gush of torque like you would expect in certain aggressive turbo petrol engines This seven-speed dual-clutch transmission is the one we are familiar with, as it is the same one that did duties in the old Polo GT TSI and the previous-gen Skoda Octavia 1.8 TSI. And just like in those cars, this gearbox performs smoothly and seamlessly with quick shifts. In D mode, it is eager to shift to the highest ratio possible in the interest of fuel efficiency, but in sport mode, it holds the gears a bit longer. If you're driving with a heavy foot on the accelerator pedal, this gearbox will hold the revs for you and will give you those crisper, immediate responses. What's not nice, however, is that when the revs cross 3,500 RPM, the engine node becomes quite boomy and this becomes quite intrusive inside the cabin. There are paddle shifters too, which offer manual control over the gearbox. And on the days when you are driving in a relaxed manner with your family, cruising on the highway, enjoying the drive, this engine has the option to turn off two out of its four cylinders, thus reducing your fuel consumption, which is essential in today's day and age when fuel prices are skyrocketing. And when the two cylinders are off, you won't even realize it unless you look at the prompt on the MID. Volkswagen hasn't revealed final fuel economy figures as yet, but we'll be putting the Tigon through our test cycles very soon to give real-world figures. The ride quality is pretty good and it absorbs the bad roads in its stride very nicely. On the highway, on wavy surfaces, there's very little body movement and this car feels flat and composed at all times. And this is despite the automatic riding on 17-inch wheels. Just like the Kushak, this Volkswagen Tycoon is really enjoyable to drive. It tackles corners really nicely in a very balanced, in a very composed manner. Here's a fun fact. The Tycoon's platform is set to be 30% stiffer than the outgoing Polo and Ventos and the result is pretty evident when driving this SUV with Verve. You would be surprised with the amount of grip this car has around corners and it doesn't roll as much as you would have expected a car which sits so high above the ground and is so tall in height. Now that you know how the GT Automatic is to drive, time to check out the GT Manual. Step into the manual after the automatic and it feels a lot more old school. There are proper three pedals, analog dials and you fire up the engine the old fashioned way by twisting the key. Now I'm in the enthusiast choice, the 1.5 litre TSI with the 6-speed manual transmission. Right from the get-go, this car feels enthusiastic, it feels energetic and it feels eager to make an impression. Interestingly, the manual doesn't feel as boomy as the automatic at higher revs and the power delivery feels a bit livelier too. The manual feels extremely eager to rev and you will often find yourself revving to 4000-4500 rpm which is not how you would drive on a day-to-day -day basis but this engine is so potent it eggs you to push harder and rowing through this smooth shifting 6-speed manual is a joy and the connected feel that it offers just makes a big smile on your face appear. Like the automatic, even this engine gets cylinder deactivation, wherein two cylinders cut off when driving with a light foot in order to save fuel. What is not nice, however, is the clutch feel, which feels a bit springy in its action, and the weight is a bit more than you would have expected in a car of this size. In terms of ride comfort, the GT Manual rides on 16 inch wheels with slightly higher profile tyres compared to the automatic. However, the ride quality is as good, if not better, than the automatic. 
Volkswagen, however, is penalizing the enthusiasts by not offering features in even this top spec GT Line 1.5 manual version. You don't get kit like LED headlamps, you get 16 inch wheels instead of the 17 on the automatic, you don't get auto headlamps, no auto dimming mirror, you don't even get a sunroof or the ventilated seats. So what do you get for your money then? Here's a look at the manual's equipment list. In terms of safety, while ESP is standard right from the base variant, even this GT manual version gets only two airbags. I think this car will appeal to only those pure diehard manual enthusiasts who want nothing more than a fantastic drive experience. Volkswagen aims to make the GT manual a lot more accessible by stripping it off features translating to an aggressive pricing. So should you be interested in the Tygoon? If it's a big and beefy SUV you want or will be travelling with all five seats occupied often, the Tygoon won't be the right pick for you. That being said, the Tygoon is a comfy four-seater and it does look chic both inside and out. Yes, it's not as well equipped as its Korean rivals and there are some signs of cost cutting too. But on the plus side, it feels as tough as you'd expect a German SUV to be. Where the Tygoon really appeals is in the driving department. The 1.5-litre engine is strong and coupled with the comfy ride and crisp handling, this is a fun-to-drive SUV. The small-hearted Tygoon 1.0-litre TSI also promises to be good bang for your buck. We expect prices in the range of 10.5 to 14 lakh rupees for the 1.0-litre versions, while the 1.5-litre manual is likely to start at 15.5 lakh rupees, and the range-topping DSG versions are likely to come at 18 lakh rupees. Only a full-blown comparison with its rivals will ultimately tell us where the Tygoon fits in. But if it's a solid, sophisticated and sporty mid-size SUV you want, the Tygoon could just be the one for you. The rear seat of the Skoda Kusha... Tygoon. Okay, go. Someone had bad food. Sorry, Omar. Sorry, Mohit. <laughs> if you like this video, don't subscribe. <laughs> what? 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 Sorry, what? sorry, it wasn't me. <laughs>